Hi there, welcome back to Andy Carr on Sunday, the, what is it today? Is it actually the 1st of May today? I'm struggling here to remember dates. Yeah, it seems to be. All right, well, welcome to May, everybody. And um, maybe, maybe, maybe for the British state, apparently they're very worried now about the um, the fragility of the union. There have been many uh, British newspapers warning about um, how the... The union has never been in such peril, as they put it. However, um, it's interesting to note this week that the Tory government has basically repeated all of the mistakes it made way back in the 1990s, when the Tory government was basically toppled because of the endemic corruption and sleaze which engulfed the party in the later years after Margaret Thatcher and John Major. Now, it's interesting that the Tories never seem to learn um, but it also appears that Westminster is regarded as a bit of safe space for anybody who wishes to view pornography, get drunk, have parties, uh, and basically misbehave in a way which we wouldn't expect from politicians here north of the border. In the meantime, Scots are going to the polls this week on the 5th of May to elect what we hope will be decent law-abiding citizens to our local authorities in an attempt to rid ourselves of the same kind of corrupt individuals from uh, UK political parties who have nested themselves in Scottish local authorities for some time. Now, obviously, there are some, shall we say, last redoubts of unionism in Scottish local authorities, and I think um, most notably up the northeast of Scotland, where there are still some Tory coalition-led uh, councils, which are obviously where the money is. Wherever there is money in Scottish um, economy, and particularly in Scottish cities, wherever there's money to be made from things like oil, you will find British political parties. So we hope that um, the next uh, local elections coming up this week will see a clear out of all of those UK parties from our local authorities so that we have control over our local authorities and have hopefully removed the kind of corrupt and the nefarious activities which seem to be the par for the course in Westminster. And now, not uh, not to leave the subject completely, but the independence referendum is never far away from people's thoughts. And of course, it's not going to be announced right at the moment. We've still got to get these elections done. But we've also seen other uh, news this week. Nadine Doris uh, has been making lots of stupid comments um, as a culture secretary, particularly about the potential privatisation of Channel 4, and uh, misunderstood completely when she compared the privatisation of Channel 4, which is a public sector broadcaster supported by the licence fee, with the previous Channel 5 channel, which was always private. It was never privatised. It had never been uh, a part of public broadcasting. So, uh, yeah, it just is par for the course that the Tory party seems to be, uh, as far as the ministers are concerned, people with incompetence and folk who really just don't understand what they're doing. Um, now also there have been other news, particularly been watching things like uh, The Telegraph, and there's some interesting articles appearing in there uh, from the Ministry of Defence who say that they have actually done a survey of all of their um, English naval ports to see if there's anywhere that they could put their nuclear submarines when they are uh, rearming them with nuclear weapons. And they came to the conclusion, again, this is not the first time they've come to this conclusion, that nuclear missiles are so dangerous and unsafe that they don't want them anywhere near their uh, centres of population. So according to the MOD, none of their military bases, none of their uh, naval ports is a safe place to put the nuclear weapons uh, or to load their submarines. So in the event of independence and Britain's nuclear weapons being removed from their current location in the Clyde, there would be apparently no place safe enough in England to put them where they wouldn't be close to you know, population centres. However, they concluded that it's perfectly all right for them to be close to all the population centres on the west coast of Scotland, namely places like Greenock and Glasgow, Paisley. Um, so many towns and cities along the west coast of Scotland would be absolutely devastated if there was a nuclear strike at Faslane or a major nuclear explosion of any kind in Faslane. So, as usual, we are seen as expendable and uh, Scottish people are basically guinea pigs. We are we are the lab rats of the United Kingdom. We are where 
the dangerous stuff is put that they don't want to put next to their own people. But that's not really a surprise, I guess. I mean, it's it's inevitable that this is always going to happen. Anyway, it's, uh, it seems a long way to the independence referendum right now, but at the same time, once these uh, elections are over, um, we should see and we should hear that the independence referendum bill is to be presented before Holyrood. And for everybody uh, concerned with independence, this can't come soon enough. Uh, the fact that it has been delayed so long, or the announcement of it has been delayed so long, I think is largely down to the fact that the SNP is having to do several things at once because it's fighting an election at the moment uh, alongside all the other parties of independence, notably ALBA and the Greens, uh, and also, I suppose, um, Scottish Socialist parties and other smaller parties which are pro-independence. The SNP has not been able to devote as much of its time as it should have done, I think, uh, to preparing for the next independence referendum. I think the, the fact that all of the arguments which were made for independence in 2014 have now proved to be true uh, based on our lived experience of all of the um, broken promises since 2014. It's difficult to see how much more of an argument can be made for independence other than the continuing decline in the British economy, the news that uh, from the retiring uh, chairman of the Bank of England that he claims that a very large percentage of all of the inflation that we are currently experiencing, the rises in prices, are mostly down to Brexit. And it seems that if you are the boss of a British institution and you're working essentially for the government, like the Bank of England chairman does, that you can't say this while you're still in office. But as soon as you retire, the truth comes out. The Brexit is the prime driver of inflation in the United Kingdom. And this is coming from the head of the Bank of England, or well, the former head of the Bank of England. So I think you could take that to the bank, if you'll pardon the pun, that Brexit is causing all of the inflation, or most of the inflation that we are now seeing. There's also been a massive ramping up, incidentally, of unionist trolling of every pro-independence website that there is and every single blog that there is on independence is suffering interference, particularly here on Facebook, where hundreds of you have reported that uh, your notifications have been cleared by Facebook and you find it difficult to get this program, or if you do fi find it, that it suffers from enormous buffering. Again, this is a sign that we're getting under their skin, and I think this is a very good sign that they are terrified because if they allow the or they they think they if they allow the referendum to go ahead it's going to be one the fact that they are again looking at places to put these nuclear missiles tells you that they are expecting a big yes vote and they're expecting to be getting their nuclear weapons back sometime shortly afterwards all of which is a good sign and again explains why people like Michael Gove refused to publish the secret polling which the United Kingdom government did many years ago now um, and the result of which has never been made public despite incidentally a court order ordering Mr Gove to reveal the information. So a lot of things going on and um, as I say we're always waiting but let's get out there and vote on the 5th. Let's make sure that our local authorities are under the control of the people of Scotland and doing what the people of Scotland want, not what Westminster wants. Because, let's face it, everything that happens in Scotland has to wait for Westminster to agree to it or give permission for it. The only thing that we don't have to wait for, for, for their, our, you know, their permission for is a referendum. Because, as I've explained so many times, the referendum bill is a piece of Scottish legislation, and if the British government wants to challenge it, it can only do so using Scottish law, even if it uses its Supreme Court uh, through which to make the challenge. The Supreme Court has to apply only Scots law to dealing with a Scottish piece of legislation. And I would expect, given the large number of legal eagles who populate the SNPs in a circle, that they will very carefully word the independence referendum bill with caveats saying that it is understood that this is a referendum uh, which is advisory only and therefore does not overstep the boundaries of the powers of Holyrood because it simply cannot affect the, the actual physical status 
of the British Constitution in any way. But what it does do, when we get a big yes vote, is it puts enormous international pressure on the United Kingdom to accept the result. And that's what this is about. It's about democracy. It's not about law. The law has never been in question in Scotland. And when you write a bill which becomes legislation in Scotland, it cannot become a law unless it meets all of the requirements of Scots law. So as I said, any challenge by the United Kingdom, even in the Supreme Court, using Scots law will fail because the bill would simply not become legislation unless it had ticked all the boxes and was entirely lawful. Anyway, that's about it from me today. I'm sure there are other things I've forgotten to mention today, but I am rushing off to go and do some real work at the moment. But anyway, I'll be back again, I hope, tomorrow. In the meantime, keep the faith and remember to vote on the 5th. Make sure and get out there and cast your vote for pro-independence parties and rank all of the rest of the unionist politicians near the bottom, especially any Tories. Make sure they are the last in your list of things to vote for. Remember, this voting system is vote till you vote. You rank every single candidate on the sheet in order of preference. Your most favourite at the top and your least favourite the ones you really want to get rid of at the bottom. If you do that, they won't get elected. If you leave them off and you don't vote for them at all, you don't rank them at all, then they will get in at some other stage through the counting process. It's very, very important that you rank the Tories at the bottom, the Lib Dems and Labour just above that, presumably, and then everybody else who's pro-independence in order of your preference above that. Anyway, that's it for me today. I'll be back again tomorrow. As I said, in the meantime, keep the faith, enjoy the sunshine while it lasts, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye for now.